Good evening and welcome to the January 26, 2023 meeting of the Yorktown Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is John Meisterich. Uh, Gordon Fine is uh, going to be here soon, so I'm covering for the moment. Um, with me is Bill Gregory, Tony Chipotle, Bob Fahey, our recording secretary, Glenda Daly, uh, town attorney, Adam Rodriguez, and Nizreen Corey, our uh, support uh, administrator. Um, so our first order of business in our meetings is to normally approve the uh, Wait, minutes. Set the, set, the, set the dates, set the I'll next meeting. Oh, all right. Yeah. I have my notes here. So. Go wrong with that. All right. I thought, uh, I, thought, I, I thought you were winging it. I haven't paid attention for 10 I, years. I don't know I, what I, I'm I doing. Um, I, I thought you were winging it. Uh, so uh, the minutes were circulated amongst the members. Um, any comments nope. or concerns with the minutes? Nope. So I'll make a motion to approve the December meeting minutes. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Minutes are approved. So for anyone that's here for a new business, their first meeting, um, there's some dates and things to pay attention to. There's the next meeting is February um, 23rd in, the, in here. Um, the mailings, if you need to notify your neighbors if you're opening an application, the mailings have to be sent between January 30th and February 8th. If you don't send those uh, mailings on the proper dates, we can't open the hearing next month. So you send them with proof of mailing and provide that to uh, Nizreen prior to the meeting, and then we can open your hearing. Um, if we do a site, if we need to do a site visit for your application, it will be done on February 18th in the morning by the members of the board here. And um, hopefully in the back of the room, there's some signs you have to do the notification and post a sign on your property. Okay. So uh, we'll start with new business, which again is setting up for next month. Uh, is anyone here for Mendoza, 1824 Hanover Street? Okay, so this is an application for a renewal of a special use permit for an accessory apartment. Um, so we will refer that to the building department, and we will handle that administratively, uh, but we will set it down for a hearing next month. Uh, February 23rd. February 23rd. Um, all in favor? Uh, Second. I make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Vukaj? Vukaj. Okay, your name for the record? David Tetro, architect. Hi, David. Representing the owner. Okay, so what are you trying to do at 3838 Kent Lane? Well, we're putting a second story onto the house and we are expanding a little bit of the first floor to kind of square it off in the, the rear corner of the house so the it already has a front yard we're not we're not increasing the front yard nonconformity okay so uh we'll set this one down for a site visit for uh february 18th um, we'll refer it to the building department and i'll make a motion to set the hearing for the meeting on February 23rd. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks. Okay. Um, Bisacci, is anyone here? It's a special use for a accessory apartment, just like we had. Uh, we'll handle that administratively. We'll refer it to the building department. So I'll make a motion to set that for the public hearing on February 23rd. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Lumi, 22226 Crompound, uh, another renewal for an accessory apartment. Um, so we'll handle that administratively also, unless someone's here. Um, we'll refer it to the building department and set it down for a public hearing on February 23rd. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we will move on to our adjourned agenda, which are items that were opened in the past, uh, public hearings. Uh, Carvalho, I think we have adjourned that and uh, got information that the, that's been requested, re requested to be adjourned again by the applicant. So we'll 
Make a motion to adjourn Carvalho. Uh, second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Grace? Same. Same. Uh, we'll make a motion to adjourn that to next month. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Elizage, yeah, 1658 Amazon. Two applications there. Oh, the back. All right. Did he report? Oh. Uh, nice to see everybody again. Hi, how are you? Here. Can you state your name for the record, please? Alex Elizai. Okay. How do you pronounce it? Huh? How do you pronounce your name? Elizai. Elizai. Okay, thank you. I don't think I got it per perfectly right, but <laughs> uh, right. You, you found your way up to the podium at least. A few so times. I did something. <laughs> So there's actually two, uh, two items on our agenda that uh, pertain to your property, and one is uh, an attempt to legalize three accessory apartments in a single-family home and allow a second application to allow two primary structures on a lot where one is permitted. Um, and my recollection of the last hearing is we were – going to do further research on the property of the history we've been having trouble finding that so hopefully you can update us on what has occurred since the last time you were here absolutely so um i just want to point out that you know i'm truly trying to be a good neighbor um i went through um you know a very lengthy process over the past uh, year and um i think i've done almost everything and anything that has been asked of me including uh, architects, engineering, spoke with the planning department, um, searching records, as uh, Steve from the building department knows as well. Uh, the, the property doesn't have a CFO, and my attempt to legalize uh, the property when I acquired the property was truly my intention. And the only thing based on the information that we were able to pull up, and I think you know, it's safe to say that most people know this, um, is the tax assessment card, which shows that there are three units at the property. Uh, the main house um, had a, and I believe um, I highlighted it for, for everyone, the main house showed that there was a, um, an apartment in the main house that was rented, and the cottage shows that the cottage was rented, which means that the owner-occupant at the time um, occupied one unit, the other unit was rented, and the cottage unit was rented. Um, I'd like to point out just a few, uh, a few things that I think you're also aware of. There's multiple meters at the property. Um, there's multiple septic tanks at the property. There are three curb cuts for driveways. It's a, it's a huge, it's an oversized lot. It's 1.3 acres. Um, there's a, a separate structure, which is the garage, the main house, which is the one in question, and then obviously the cottage. And um, the property, from, <clears throat> from what I've been able to gather thus far and from what the title report shows, is the property was constructed, the properties were constructed in 1940. Um, I haven't done anything to the property other than cosmetically improve the property. I applied uh, for the electrical permits to upgrade the electric in the main house. Uh, the cottage has its own separate meter. Um, and that's, you know, like these are the points that, you know, obviously speak for themselves. Uh, but other than that, there's no additions. Uh, there's no additional structures being built. I've done a ton of landscaping work because the building department required it as per, I believe, the, uh, the highway department. Uh, Excuse me. Again, just trying to be a good neighbor. I'm cleaning up this corner lot that has been deprived for countless decades, it appears. And other than that, there's you know there's not much more that I could possibly prove to uh, the department, to, to you folks as well. That you know ultimately what we're trying to do is just clean up what's there. I've made every attempt to obviously abide by the steps that needed to be taken through the application process. Um, I've done everything I believe thus far that I've been able to do and try to uncover every, as much information as I've been able to uncover. And the only thing that we really have to go on is on the assessment card, which shows that a unit is rented in the main house and the cottage unit was rented, which leaves us basically three units. Uh, I believe that what we were originally asking for in terms of the four units, um, I believe was a major issue or a sticking point. But if you look at even the comparables in the, in the neighborhood, there's a property for sale, which is 1802 Amazon for sale listed currently, which is a legal three-family property, which is less than a quarter mile away from the property. So it isn't uncommon that there, there, there are properties in the immediate area that are multi-unit properties. We're not adding any additional units again. We're not building any new structures. And again, it's an oversized lot that does have three curb cuts for, for driveways that are paved, by the way. 
and separate uh, and also separate uh, uh, septic tanks. So I even went to the extent of, <clears throat> in the event that there was a, a Department of Health issue, I went to the extent of speaking to the gentleman at the uh, the planning department, uh, John. Tagater. Yes, John Tagater. I'm sorry, I drew a blank on the name. That's fine. Um, <clears throat> he said the path of least resistance, if I can't pull up the Department of Health records, was connect directly into the sewer line, which is right on the street on Macau. It's literally right there. There's a manhole right there. Um, they, the, the, uh, the department also uh, marked where we can tie directly into the sewer in the event there was a, a health department issue. Okay, so uh, basically this is not, you know, quote unquote new information that uh, we did have a copy of the uh, assessor card it does say apartment rented out in main house cottage rented out. Correct. So um, there's no new bathrooms. Yeah, that's there's one. No that's one apartment in the main house and one in the cottage, at least anyway here. But you were, the, uh, yeah, the last time that we were here together, uh, you were going to check and see if you could find any historical records from the building department. We checked. Steve and, and I checked. Okay. Well, I'll ask nothing, there's nothing on record in the building department. And, so there's and, no, the, and, and, and there's two, thing, what, excuse me, there's no COs on, on this on this property. No CFO. No. And there's and and the other thing was that you were going to check the board of health. Correct. For any records in terms of the septic system. Correct. Those were those were requested uh, back in September. We have mm -hmm. not heard back yet. You have not heard back. We have not heard back. So so absent absent the uh, the not hearing from the board of health. Basically, uh, what we're hearing is that there are no records of anything in the building department. Well, it's not that there aren't necessarily any records. It's that they haven't responded to us yet. Our engineering team uh, requested them, and we're still waiting for a response. I was willing to go down there, except my understanding was I couldn't go down there. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't accept any walk-ins or anything along those lines. So we put in the request, and we've been waiting since. What is the... Regardless, we, we, we searched... I searched... Uh, all the records that I have, that I know of that are in the building department for anything that relates to this property for it being a multifamily property. And you know, that we couldn't find anything on it. The only thing we're, you know, we're, we can go by is what the assessor saw when they originally went out there and it was a one family house with the <coughs> cottage. That's all it was. Or the, the other the items that were listed later on, showing it as the first what the assessor had seen, they went out and did their inspections. They saw, you know, units that popped up. So over the years, since 1956, well, the, 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 the permits should have been taken out by the previous there, owner. There, there, owned it. there are there there were no building permits listed on the assessor record. No. No. Yes, oh, there are some building permits, yeah. but they're recent ones. It doesn't. It's like for some nothing for of. the original construction. And, uh, and it says 1964 re remodeled house with no permit. Right. What was the original structure put on that property? Um, well, to the best of our knowledge, he found that out, and I guess in the 1940s. Where did you find that what information? Said, on the title report. Did you bring that information? Um, I, I submitted all that information. Okay. All right, I'm not correct. Looking at the files, but I thought. That is important. No, I, 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 again, I've done, I gotta tell you something, this has been very, very challenging and very, very difficult. And, uh, you know, I'm a very transparent person and I feel that I've done, you know, as much as I can possibly do at this point. I understand there might be some, you know, additional uh, options for us to, you know, further, you know, try to possibly, you know, uncover some additional information. But I, I, I think we've exhausted. What, what? You're, you're indicating that there's a possibility that you could uncover additional no, I'm, I, no. What I'm saying is that if there's other options or if there's any other possibilities, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to you know try to further dig into you know any 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 additional information that we can find. But I feel like I personally have done as much as I could. We have done as much as we can possibly do, and the only thing that's notated is what's on the tax assessor's card. So Which I believe even on, even on the card there shows you know there's a diagram of you know, possibly um, additions on there, but it's, again, it's not necessarily as legible as it can be, but again, these are structures that have been there for 82 years now. And basically, even if anything. you look at the assessor record and they Doesn't indicate, they do indicate more than one dwelling unit on the property. There's not five indicated on the assessment card. There's not f five? There's not five indicated on the assessment card. I'm not sure what you mean by that. In other words, what you're asking for is to have 
a total of five dwelling units on the property? No. Three. Just what's on the assessment card at this point. Well, so, the, so the, the application was for what? Four. It was for four? Correct. Okay. And Steve. Right, so at this point, we have everything that's going to be submitted, or you alluded to... Uh, uh, I, I mean, I, at this point, I'm, I'm ready to engage. I think he's saying, in, in theory, something might exist, but he can't it find happen. it, and we're not. I'm, I'm ready to yeah. engage a, a new attorney at this point. I think you know, you, you know, David. Mm -hmm. uh, David, you know, is he's he's working on larger projects. Um, you know, I'm willing to engage a, a new attorney in order to try to. So, you know, so at this point, do you want us to proceed at this point, or well, do you want to stay? You want to stay adjourned until you have benefit of counsel. Well, I, well, here's what I'm asking, essentially, um, as is. If it's three units, it's three units. Scratch the fourth unit, and I'll call it a day. I think it's honestly at this point, I, I believe, it is, is a fair compromise for what, for what we've been able to uncover. We're not asking for anything in addition. There's a comp right down the road. The property is uh, actively listed for sale. It's a three-family. There's multiple uh, um, of properties um, that we were able to uncover also that are multi-unit properties. Question for Adam. Adam, do we have to revise the application to three units now? Um, I would think so. Yeah, so. Uh, boy, I've, been, I've been serving for a while. I didn't get an answer. No well, if you could close it was built in 1940, does that mean anything? It predates no, yes, all no. this? No, no, no. It's no, no. in 1932. Right. Yeah. Built in the 40s with no CO, so it's, something it's, fell it's, through it's the cracks. It's extremely that odd to me that there's no, that there's no, there's no record of the construction. That just so that strikes me as exceptionally odd at this juncture, especially with all the construction that went on. Just one building yet made. That's three. Give me a break. Yeah, not at all. So you don't think that you're going to be able to submit any additional information other than what we have already heard? I'm prepared to engage new counsel if that's what I need to do. I, I, that, I, I'm, that I'm is, not an that, attorney. That, I'm, I think, is entirely up to you, I guess. Of course. I'm, 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 pre I'm, prepared, I'm prepared to do so. But essentially what I'm asking for is just, at this point, a fair compromise simply for the sole fact that I'm, all I'm doing is improving the corner. I'm improving the lot. I'm improving the community. The, the property has been deprived for decades. And if, you, if, if you've taken a look, even from the cosmetic work that I've done, the property looks a lot better than ultimately what it used to. And, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, what, what, what we have on the tax assessment card reflects, obviously somebody had to live in there because it was an owner occupied unit. It's noted that there was an apartment rented in the main house, which is, which I believe I highlighted and that the cottage was also rented. So at this, at this juncture, if it's three units, I'll call it a day and just wave the flag. Um, and just, are you going to live at this location? I, um, the, the intention initially was not to live at this location. My parents live close by, um, but at, at this juncture, I, I don't have the intention of living there personally right now. So you're gonna, so you, you want to have a, a fully rented property with no landlord on on premises? Well, the idea from what I said previously, my father's downsizing, so my father's a lot older. He was going to live in the cottage and the other units. He was, and my father pro managed properties for a living in the city. So I don't and know he was ultimately going to be. Does that constitute? Well, it's another part of the variance that we would have to mm -hmm. approve, you know, non-owner-occupied accessory. And we discussed that a lot last mm -hmm, month and, um, or the last time, and it was, it was very contentious. It would be a precedent-setting move that would affect many potential applicants, and we are very reticent to approve something like that. Um, this is, is there? Th th this is going to be a family oriented property. There's, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not renting this out and I'm telling you uh, as honestly and uh, as transparent as I can possibly tell you, it's not being rented out to singles. It's the yard is big enough where I was actually going to put picnic tables and even a, uh, a kid's swing set to attract families to be able to live there. The, the idea was not to have a lot of turnover, to have somebody who was going to stay there, somebody even within the community, um, whether it's uh, a teacher or somebody who is in, the, uh, in law enforcement or any sort of civil servant. But, I mean, let, let's say all that were true and you had the perfect tenants and everything mm -hmm. else. If we were to approve non-owner occupied, there's like 1,000 accessory apartments in this town. And every one of those applicants would have a justification to us to say, 
it's going to be non-owner occupied. We're going to rent right. both you're sides. You're setting a precedent. And, and yeah. suddenly the, the nature of our entire town changes to, you know, two family rentals. And, you know, so that's why we're very, it would be very oh, difficult for us to approve it. It has nothing to do with you personally or any that? of that, you know. Um, so that's one issue, one major issue. Um, the other thing I see is if you were to sell that, you know, you're gonna, your intentions are all good, but if we were to approve this, with the, what you're asking, you could sell that property tomorrow, and now we're faced with the next guy comes along, and we have an absentee landlord situation. And like was previously explained, town doesn't want to get involved in that. There's so a, that's kind of where we're at. How about a probationary period? You know, what well, you that, our annual? special use permits are by definition uh, pro probationary because they only last. Give me a chance. Years. You know, just g g give me a chance. We 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 can do an annual review. I'm happy to do so. Um, you're more than welcome, obviously, to come do site visits. I mean, everything that I'm doing there is to improve the uh, the neighborhood. Again, this is this is a major corner, and I think um, I think just in, in terms of just being able to you know, give the face the place a facelift, I think is going to represent the community a lot better. Um, Amazon, you know, has a lot of shrubbery on the road. Um, it's not very appealing. What I've done is I've cut a lot of that back. I've even cut down trees in order to open up the property for, for better sunlight. Um, again, landscaping is going to be a major, a major point here. And it's, it's, it's purely for the sole fact that I'm looking to improve the neighborhood and looking to improve the community. And most importantly, looking to improve that corner, which is, once again, it's a it's a big lot. It's an oversized lot. So at one, this at this point, ahead. are you considered the application uh, to be fully submitted? Is there? I guess the question that he's asking is: there anything more that you can basically submit pursuant to this application? I don't know. I'm not an attorney, so I would have to so possibly you engage. Probably would want to well, talk to your attorney yeah. before you decide which way you want to go with this. I mean, you know, there was, were we led to believe that you were, you have engineers that are trying to solicit information about the septic system that's on that property? Correct. It was requested back in September. Right, and so we've heard nothing from them. We have not heard anything from them. All right, and, and spoke to John Tegna again. It was, uh, it, it was it was it was it's purely for the sole fact of bypassing. Well, you know, the time that's not the reason why we were asking. Okay. The reason why we're asking you so then whether this was legally set up as a three-family house. Right now, we have no record. For, there's no CO on the property, and we have nothing to indicate that there is. And so we we're looking for an alternative. If we can't find information regarding a CO, we were looking for information. Perhaps it was approved. The septic system was approved for three families, and it would be on record with the county. So we're looking as an alternative. Without that information, we still have no record that this is, a, I, this I, is an approved property. I, so that's what, that's our problem. That's what we're trying to figure out. We're trying to accommodate you, but without anything, we're not going to do it blindly. Yeah, but we, we, we understand all, again just on the basis of the tax assessment card, which notes the, that the tax assessor's card shows you from 1962 to present. You're saying it was there since 1940, and there's no record. You got three buildings on the property, and not, there's not a scrap of evidence that there was any type of certificate of approval. This could have been built illegally. We don't know. I mean, it's like I have, we have no idea. And we're asking you for you to demonstrate that this is what we've got. We've looked for alternatives. We've given you other options that you could proceed and perhaps satisfy the requirement. We got nothing right now. So how can we approve something if we, if we, we don't have that information? I've engaged. I've engaged, again, the engineering department. We've engaged the health department. I engaged the planning department. Again, in order to uh, accommodate, you know, in the event that there is any sort of health issues, um, bypassing the septics and connecting directly to the sewer. Again, I'm just. You, you, did you hear what I said? I, it's I not about it's not about accommodating what you want to do because that can be done. We're looking to establish one that was a legal thing to do in the first place. You I, might only you might only have one septic tank on the property. Well, two. at this point, you may want to consider requesting an adjournment, consult with council, okay. and realigning your position because now you're going from a four uh, four family uh, occupancy down to three. Mm -hmm. Uh, there may be some procedural issues we've got to deal with as well, and you may have to do more mailings. But, you know, I strongly advise that you consult with counsel um, and, and once again, you know, uh, supplement the application and possibly revise uh, and amend it. Is there any, anything with other houses in the applicant mentioned, other houses that have, quote, unquote, legal three-family, uh, you know, there it's are, not a three-family zone. There are obviously in that area houses that are basically what they call legal non-conforming. Right, right. Legal non-conforming status because 
A lot of uh, Mohegan was developed early in the... Uh, before 1932. Before 1932. Uh, so, yes, there are legal non-conforming lots. There may be, and quite frankly, there are also probably illegal dwelling units on the property. Right. That's not something that, that, that basically uh, lends itself to a argument for a particular application. It's for justification well, for doing no character in the neighborhood. Uh, um, if you, absenting anything else that you have to give us, does anybody else in the audience that, yeah. want to comment on this application? I'm doing everything okay. I can. I really All am. right. So uh, you may, if, if I'm not mistaken, the board is basically saying if you have any other information that you can supply to us, or if you are desirous of uh, 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 contacting or engaging counsel, new counsel in this, that's fine. We can adjourn the application. Or alternatively, if you don't think you're going to be able to come up with anything, then uh, we're going to probably close and reserve. That's so, right. so that's that's an that's something that we can so, offer yeah. you as an option. I appreciate Just that. Just let us know what you want to do. Um, I think. Well, so, so you're saying to resubmit the application for? Well, the, well the, the we would adjourn this hearing. Okay. We're going to adjourn. And then, the, <clears throat> if you wanted to change your application from four, to, you know. Although, it's, although at this juncture, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. Yeah. You know, basically. It, we're still looking for yeah, some kind really, of a right. justification for multifamily dwellings on a piece of property that's been zoned one family since 1932. Or, you know, so, or so at the, end, at the end of the day, whether it's a three-family house or a four-family house, we still have to make a determination of some type of uh, whether, whether the thing w had any legality whatsoever or whether it was done illegally, whether it was a two-family, a three-family, or, or something like that. We've already basically said that the accessory apartment law doesn't really apply. Right. Okay. That's not something what they're asking for. They're actually asking, in my mind, for a use variance, which is extremely difficult to get. Right. But unless we have some justification for any of this stuff, uh, and, you know, obviously the applicant hasn't been able to come up with anything yet, but we can offer the option of you continuing to look at least for another month to see if you can come up with anything. If that's something that you're desirous of, then we can adjourn the thing. I'm happy to do so. I'll give it, a, I'll give it another shot. All right, so make then we'll, ad we'll adjourn the application. So I'll make a motion to adjourn this application. Well, before, you, before you do that. When was Sorry. the last time the uh, the um, Worcester County was contacted regarding this, this septic situation? You said in September. Has, has there been any follow up? There has. Uh, well, uh, the, the engineer department did follow up, but they, we haven't received anything yet. And that was in that was done in writing, or was that a phone call? Do we in, in have writing. some documentation for that. Writing. Okay. In writing. Is there something in the file? Do you have a Do you have a copy of the letter that you sent to the Board of Health? Um, I can request it from the engineering department. The engineering department made the request? Well, not your department, I'm sorry, but my, uh, your engineer. Your engineer. my engineer, correct. Yes, it would be nice if you would have a Absolutely. Of Definitely to show the effort. Okay, you're, you're trying to go through the process, and right? So, I mean, as much information as you can get. Absolutely. I'm, I'm happy to do so. That, that's what I would recommend you do. I'm happy to do so. Okay. Thank okay, you. so I will make a motion to adjourn this hearing until the February 23rd meeting. Do second. I have a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. So, do we have O'Donnell? No, he's not coming tonight. That's I believe, Grace's. yeah, that That's was adjourned. Right. Well, Grace's uh, post, but anyway. Um, so, uh, that will, I'll make a motion to adjourn O'Donnell to the next meeting, February 23rd. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so I have a couple that may be adjourned. Uh, I believe Ali Hajaraj. He's adjourned. He's adjourned. No one here, right? It was adjourned at the request. Uh, actually, yeah. So we didn't even open that right, hearing. Right. No, the um, And, and Kurt Kurti is anyone here on Kurti? Because we been uh, adjourned as well. It's also adjourned. Back and forth a little bit. Yeah.
Yes, 1655 Central. So if anyone was here about 1655 Central, uh, the applicant did not complete the mailings on time or through the proper dates or wait, wait, wait. some issue like that. Is this for Curdy? It says 1681 right. Summit right. Street. So let me clarify. Yeah. Uh, our agenda has 1681 Summit Street. New address. Curdy. That's the incorrect address. I don't know why that is the case. Maybe that's the owner's address or something. No, it was but just, the, the proposed. Okay, so the actual address is 1655 Central Street is the correct address, and there's a sign and whatnot. So what I've been told is that uh, the, the mailings were not done correctly or some issue, so we're not going to open that hearing this week, this month. So it's going to be automatically adjourned until next month, um, unfortunately for anyone who's come here and had to sit and listen to uh, Amazon for 20 minutes, but um, I'm sorry. <laughs> So uh, if they weren't in those yeah, dates, they, you know, and they're, like, go, they're going to remail the, the dates notice. were correct, they, but the uh, setbacks were incorrect, so they had to re. So they're going to remail the notices to you, and you will you get, get a them new again. Notice. But just so you know, we're going to have the hearing next month. All things being equal. Yeah, February twenty third. <laughs> Yeah. February 23rd. Yeah. When, when, when you go online, to I, I've, not, I've not had to do it, but when you go online to check the agenda, when you go online to check the agenda, will it say what's adjourned and what's not? Does it tell you that? It does. Is it the same copy it does, as this? It keeps changing. It's the Thank same you. as this. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, yeah. two days before. Yeah, it would. You know, if, like if yeah. you did it Monday, you know, we'd know Monday if the meeting was Thursday, right? It says it, you know. it says it on the, uh, says it on the, on the, on the website. In the uh, box. Okay, folks, we're going to move on to our, the rest of our agenda. So if you could exit the, Ladies and exit gentlemen. the meeting room. <laughs> hey, that feels, I like this. Give him a moment. Give him the record show. That's Bob Fahey banging the gavel, not me. I'm driving nails. <laughs> Thank you. I'm cracking walnuts. <laughs> okay, so we will go on to our agenda for today's meeting, the, uh, the public hearings that we opened last month. One is for Taco Bell, uh, 3571 Mohegan Ave. Is anyone here on that? It's the sign guy. <laughs> <laughs> the sign guy. The sign guy. Did this have okay. to be a the, Let me... Uh, can this refer to a box. Yes. It yes. Was, it was. It was. So can you get the file? And we'll By be, all means. Read the memos I mean, if we have means. any. I'm letting him get set up. Robert, uh, <laughs> so before you start, I'm going... Uh, do we read the memos first or no, we let him talk first. Let me just um, say what this variance is for. It's an application to allow a sign of 9.5 square feet where zero is required, so it's allowed or permitted on the north elevation and a sign of 34.7 square feet where zero square feet is required on the west elevation for section 300-21 appendix D of the town zoning code. So uh, turning to the applicant, please state your name for the record. Uh, James Polinsky from Signs Inc. representing Taco Bell. Okay, so can you um, walk us through the signs and- Okay, so we're the proposing channel under sign, uh, so this is the, the front of the building that faces Route 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can you get a little closer to the microphone if possible? Sorry. So this is the front of the building here facing Route 6. Um, they're doing a white channel letter sign with a bell logo, um, similar to what was done on Route 202. Mm -hmm. um, this then is the Mohegan Avenue side, which is both of these frontages are okay. They have a, a frontage, so they're allotted. This is just a bell logo. And the ones that we're here for is the rear of the building mm -hmm. um, where they're looking to do a channel letter sign as well. It's a smaller sign. It's that the one that's nine square feet? Yes. Is it, where, where, yes. Where would, where's the back of the building? Where, where, does, where does that face? Does that face Mohegan Lake itself, Sagamore? In that yeah, back? so it faces the, the, like the, it used to be the Teachers Federal Credit Union. I think it's a faces different bank the now. Fa it the faces banks. the parking lot. It yes. doesn't, okay. It doesn't, yes. like if I came down Sagamore, I'm not going to, it's not going to be looking at me from there, right? 
No, it's going to be three, facing in the parking the lot. Okay. So you got a three sides. I got you. And then this other side is if you're driving on Route Six, headed I guess west. Uh, it's the one that faces the church. It faces the church. So you will see as you're coming down Route Six, if you're heading towards let's say JB Mall, mm -hmm. um, you will see this tower here, and that's the other sign that they're requesting that needs the variance because it doesn't have a frontage, uh, and also um, a channel letter sign. And that's the one that's thirty. Correct. Thirty-four point seven square feet. Yes. Okay. So there's three signs, and one is quote unquote legal, I guess. Or there's well, there's technically there's four, four signs because you have the one on the front on route six this is considered a sign mm -hmm. uh the bell logo because okay. it is an illuminated bell but these two have a frontage these two do not have a street frontage okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. we went to abaca abaca yeah. so there's a memo in here from abaca so I'll, I'll read it into the record at least so in a memo dated january 4 2023 uh the Advisory Board on Architecture and Community Appearance, that's ABACA, reviewed the above reference subject at their board meeting held on Tuesday, January 23rd. Uh, the applicant was present. The application is a request for sign variances as follows. It says, south elevation, in parentheses, incorrectly noted on referral as north elevation. A variance request for a sign that is 9.5 square feet where proposed sign does not front Mohegan Avenue. West elevation, a variance request for a sign that is 34.7 square feet uh, where proposed sign does not front East Main Street. Abaca has no objections to the variance requests based on the rendering submitted and attached. Let's see if there's any other. Uh, Two more. There's one from you have one from planning one from the town. and one from the building department. Yeah. I found one. Oh, and that's a notice of denial. Yeah, I have um, yes, thank planning. you. There's both of them there. All right, both there's a couple more <laughs> memos here. I'm sorry. Um, so we also have a memo from Steve Freyetta, who's in the audience from the building department, January 18th. Uh, application for variance for two signs, north elevation variance sign 9.5, uh, same 30, 34.7 on the west, uh, no objections to granting this relief. And planning board meeting on January 9th, 2023, planning board discussed for signs not facing, though it was noted that the south and north elevations were mislabeled on the submitted plans. The planning board had no objection. So uh, okay. I guess the only one of the issues just, is mislabeling just, it. it was, just oh, to clarify, it really is the south elevation that we're talking about with one of those. Is that correct? Correct. So I don't know, and I, the assistant building inspector agrees. <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming that these plans were the same plans that were used um, for coming to get the building approved so i don't know if it was never caught or if it was, it was just true. or it was my mistake that it was okay well in the, in any event labeled we, incorrectly. We, we we will revise the application to put south instead of north quiet on the south elevation correct okay does anyone in the audience have any comments on this no building department um, <laughs> <laughs> so does anyone on the board have any feelings about these signs uh, anything at all any comments not really no. questions not concerns really. I mean uh, this tower it's basically one side it's the same tower it's just one on one side one on the other it's basically goes around the corner correct yeah I mean, the signs are, are legal, it's, but for road frontage, it, basically, you know. Yes. So. And, and then on the, in the parking lot, it's just a symbol. Make a motion. What's, what's, the, what's the one at the back of the location in the parking lot? <laughs> the one here where it has the, the, the Taco Bell. It's, it's small, the Taco right? Bell individual letters with the, with the bell itself. All right. All right. The letter itself. I don't think it'd be too long. Right. So I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve this application. Uh, 
I'm going to say it because we're going to change it a little bit with the north south, but just, I'm going to make a motion to approve the application to allow the sign of 9.5 square feet where zero square feet is required on the south elevation and a sign of 34.7 square feet where zero is required on the west elevation per section 300-21 appendix D of the town zoning code. Any seconds on that? Second. Motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 It's approved. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Bisanya is a is a renewal, so we'll do that in a few minutes. Uh, Charnis. <laughs> Which one is this now? So uh, this is a application uh, for a renewal of a special use permit for storage of a commercial vehicle on the residential property. So can you state your name for the record? Yes, my name is Julian Charnis. Okay, Mr. Charnis. Um, my recollection is this is not a new, it's a renewal. It's no, been I, there for many years. We renewed so it uh, for probably how many years seven or eight it? times. Um, from the that's 24 uh, years. I yeah, guess. that's right. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> and I have been parking. So in 24 years, has anything changed? The plants have gotten bigger. <laughs> that's right. That's all that's happened is the, the trucks have been hidden more and more by the plants growing. Absolutely. Okay, so this is given the fact there is a memo from oh, the building yes, department. It's pretty straightforward. Read. January eighteenth. Uh, this is an application for a special permit in, uh, to store a commercial vehicle, residential property per three hundred dash sixty two of the town zoning code. Property is an R one twenty. I inspected this property on January eighteenth, twenty twenty three, and found no violations. I have no objections to granting the special permit. Okay, well, so we may proceed accordingly. So given that this has been for a very long time and mm -hmm. there's no changes and uh, no seeming issues with the um, special use permit, I'll make the motion to approve for three years the renewal of the special use permit for storage of a commercial vehicle at 2248 Edward Lane. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Well, thank Approved. you. Okay. Good night. See you in a few years. See you in a few <laughs> years. Right. That's for what, a period of three years? Three years. Yes, three years, right. 3.2. All right. <laughs> then we got, we okay. Uh, Bisanya is a uh, administrative approval for a renewal of a special permit. So, Bob, is there anything in the file regarding memos or something that, well, read the memo, I suppose. I don't, I don't see anything yeah. other than. There is a memo. I have a picture. There is a memo. It says right here, dated January the 19th from the building department. Uh, this is an application for renewal of special permit for an accessory apartment as per 300-38 of the town zoning code. Properties in an R120. Again, a new paragraph. I inspected this property on January 19th, 2023. Found no violations, and I have no objections to granting renewal for a special permit. Okay, so based on the fact that it's a renewal and uh, nothing has seemingly changed and no issues have uh, been noted, uh, with regard to the existing special use permit and accessory, I'll make the motion to approve for a period of three years an accessory apartment at 586 Madison Court. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's approved. There is one extra. Okay, is there anything else on our agenda? No, I don't right? I see it, but there was, this, was, this file was in with the new business. I don't know whether it was, reop was opened or not. Hmm. I don't see anything on the, on the agenda. Nothing Recognize else. the name. Gordon just texted me. What, Gordon just said nothing else? No, he just asked where we Oh, I thought so he was So there is an it. application <laughs> for a variance from October, but I've never... I don't think it's ever been opened. The There's nothing on a calendar. Which one? Poof, poof this is oh, no, that was last month's. That was... Yeah. Huh? That's oh, the we did it? Oh, right. okay. Okay. Yeah, I guess we did. So we just double-checking. Yeah. Yeah. Charnis was the last one. Okay. Yeah, we're just double-checking. Relax, ladies. <laughs> we're not doing our thing. All right, so this concludes the right, January 26th uh, meeting. This is Gordon's. Yeah. That goes in the file. Right. I'll put the file away, and then you can close the meeting. It's rock and roll, brother. It's rock and roll. <laughs> so again, uh, since there is no, no more business, we'll uh, make a motion to close the January 26th meeting. Do I have a second? second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, Aye. and happy zoning.